because this is a lightning talk, I just want to focus on a couple of points only. Um, because the abstract in the in the program gives all the details of what we did, but I'll just pick up two points out of that. Um, first of all, I would like you to uh, look at the um, author list. We worked with um, uh, with a group from India, and um, they have one of the best uh, advanced molecular diagnostic laboratories in the in the region. They they uh, sequenced COVID. Uh, at the same time as some of the Western labs. So that's where the expertise we were going to go for. And uh, they had all the, um, the scientific know-how, but they didn't know, they weren't very com confident in uh, doing online training program. So that's where we came in. We, we are all vets, vet schools, so we, we, we talk the same language. Uh, I know the slides, that's one, okay. Okay, now this has nothing to do with what you have to, uh, but I want to use this slide to set the context, why we needed to develop something like this. So also to tell a little bit about antimicrobial resistance, which is a, a big problem to the world. We think as much as climate change one day coming. So today uh, you can see the deaths due to antibiotic resistance is equivalent to stroke. And in 10 years time, it's probably going to reach the same number of deaths due to cancers. So that's the scare story of the World Health Organization. Uh, this is the Lancet report that has just come out. So we work on antimicrobial resistance. And uh, because what happens is uh, when you take antibiotics, bacteria develop a resistant gene and they transfer to other bacteria. So it hops. It's like antiviral, antifungal, say. Um, what this makes is that we need many, many more scientists and researchers in the world. Populations growing up, animal food, livestock populations are growing so much. Chicken populations are growing, aquaculture is growing, and they're all using antibiotics. And we need a lot more. Uh, scientists and researchers to work in this field, in this area. But it's a very challenging field to train people. We, we first came across the challenge in COVID, like big, biggest educational experiment, I think, ever. What, what do we do? How do we train these people now? Because we're all in uh, locked up places. So we um, talked to our colleagues in India and we decided to develop this uh, program and I have been developing a lot of online training and I really focused on, I said, this is not about developing an online training course. This is about getting the community of practice because these researchers are, are the future and they also really need to talk to each other. They, they need to, ordinarily, they would come to the lab in the morning and say, oh, did, that didn't work yesterday. What do you think? We need that conversation online. So what we did was when we developed the course, the first two weeks, they had to do what we asked them to do in their own labs, wet lab, wet lab. We, we developed wet labs in, in, in COVID time. So it was a wet lab situation. They had to do it. They had to then come and discuss uh, what went wrong. 90% of the uh, experiments didn't work. Mm -hmm. So which was, which was in a way, because that's what it is like, it doesn't work the first time you do it, or you can't repeat it. It works one day, doesn't work the next day. So we wanted to get that experience online, developing this community. So uh, I, this, is, this, is where, this is where our focus was in developing this course. This is the online collaborative learning theory, um, which, um, uh, Harrison, Linda Harrison uh, has published a lot. So that knowledge community was our focus, none of the others. So there are role of teacher, moderator, but, and then we focused on the experiences and to try and create this community. So what, what emerged was they created their WhatsApp groups. 
very quickly. Week one, there's a WhatsApp group. So they were, in addition to the synchronous sessions we were running, they were continuously, uh, every hour of the day, I, was, I, I had to leave the WhatsApp group because it was just so busy, because that's what they did, because they realized that is what they have to do. Um, and again, uh, I think I, I would back this with community of inquiry model as well, because I think this came first, community of inquiry model came first before the other model. And then it is that experience that really we focused on. So less tutor, more tutor input the first two weeks, and after that it was running. So the first uh, time we ran the course, we only took 30 people uh, for the course. We had 435 applications. And the second time we advertised, we had 670 applications. So uh, I think something worked. Uh, this is the kind of distribution of uh, uh, applications. This is where the applications came from, but you might think, mm, still seems to come from Australia and America and India, law, South Asia, so that's geographical spread. So this is this is where I think I think we can try and develop this this type of training uh, in the future. Thank you. Are you with questions? Okay. So those who are online or colleagues online, please. Put your questions in chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit more about, I mean, it's been so fantastic. So thank you for sharing it. Can you say a little bit more about how you kind of did the induction and how that brought people to, to engage? It was due to intensive. I would say I was thinking about answering the question this morning, is innovation sustainable? Mm -hmm. Sustainable innovation, I think is, a, is something to think about because, uh, because it was due to intensive the first two weeks, it was costly. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had to make sure our tutors are trained well, because these, these students, the target group is very specific young postgraduates, the researchers who were trying to. So that helped us to kind of use the right technology with them. Um, it was all video based. Entire training is video based. They had to do it on video. They had to produce videos themselves and upload their videos for the others to see that kind of. But they were very competent, I guess, that gen this generation. So we had to get the tutor strength. So that was costly. But now that we have a team running it, it is, it is more sort of, um, we are still charging very little amount of money because it's mostly for LMIC countries. That's our, that's our plan, even though we had British students doing that, of course, applying to do it. Um, but we, we want to try and keep costs down. It's just sustainable. At the moment, we only charge fifty pound, fifty dollars for the online US six week on. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want to go for a differential fee model. That's the next plan. That we will charge a bit more from non LMIC countries, mm -hmm. but that's my decision. Practical mm -hmm. question: What um, platform did you use to to um, sorry? What platform did what you platform? use to um, I was I was wondering if you mentioned um, how receives uh, um, online collaborative learning and the uh, idea generation and the idea of organization and then I forget the first step but um, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about what how how that fits into uh, your context I think I think that was very much in the design. Mm -hmm. 
So it was the, the, the design of the course, how do we, that's how I interpret that model, mm -hmm. the, how the tutors designed the idea generation, what activities will lead to idea generation mm -hmm. uh, by the participants rather than getting the participants to generate ideas. I think once they, what we wanted to do was to put them through an experience, force them to do something, and then they would learn and, uh, through that through that practical experience. And so I think that that's how I uh, would explain what we did. Maybe maybe there are different ways to interpret the model, but uh, we wanted to create something ourselves first. Yeah. It's, it's about the what's happened because I've experienced this on another course, you know, perhaps not in the same, perhaps I've misunderstood something. But certainly in the course that we were doing, we had things on Moodle, we had our community on Moodle, our course on Moodle, and our groups on Moodle. And we had WhatsApp groups running in parallel, yeah, yeah. which were the questions that we had on this particular course was is that inclusive of everybody? Who's in the groups and who's not in the groups, and we couldn't see them, so it was sort of like a yeah. I just wondered how that was working. Yeah, I think we 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 encouraged them if they wanted to develop WhatsApp group, but I completely agree with you because sometimes I see some people leaving the group. You know, you get a message saying somebody left the group, so I wonder whether people join because they. Uh, I am in like about eight WhatsApp groups now with that with these course participants. We interviewed them at the end to see because our purpose was building this network of researchers. And they said they did build, they have a very sustainable, they talk to each other, all of that, but not with tutors. Mm -hmm. They did not include tutors mm -hmm. in their WhatsApp groups. It's the same old story of uh, Cafe, isn't it? Um, online cafe. They don't want tutors there. They want. Uh, they just want to be on their own uh, to have their chat. Yeah, but it is really interesting from a tutor's point of view. Yeah, because we want to kind of know what's happening. Yes. And so they're forming the subgroups, and it's, yeah, it is a very interesting. But and yet they're doing it. So they're doing it. So we have to work with it. And yes, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I really relate to that. Yeah. So I'll come back to that and say, you know, face to face type thing, in person type thing, she can do that anyway. You know, they go up and chat in a real time, you know, you don't know what to say, you know, it's not the same. You're just fighting for them. You know, you're just fighting for them. You're just fighting for them. The, the belief systems of, of you know going into the student centered or more future centered and the way in which you leverage God um, in, in those days. It comes back to confidence, mm -hmm. isn't it? It comes back to confidence. It's it's they're they're confident to do it among themselves, mm -hmm. yes. but they're not confident to do it if there's a tutor there. Yeah. Or, or are they comfortable to do it? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, I was thinking that um, I, I totally agree. I mean, it is, it is about what people go and do anyway. They go and do it anyway. But well, we do have to recognize that sometimes those groups can be quite exclusionary. Mm -hmm. And it's not all, all students who have access to, yeah. to groups. Yeah. Uh, so students with different needs, for example, might not be able to. Get there. So I'm just thinking in terms of both your talk, Vicky, where you, you were talking about creating the community. I'm just thinking about the you know power relations within the community. So because you were you had senior, you know, labeled senior learning designers, junior learning designers, and I guess the same I mean, in, yeah. in terms of yeah. power relationships yeah. in, yeah. in the community as well. Yeah. Power the ability of all that communities mm -hmm. and you're trying to try to build that trust and you know that, that they know as a safe person. If there are lots of sort of like conversations going on somewhere else and like something that you know, something, you know, it becomes I found it much more challenging 
to work with the community that was on the Google and seeing as a group mm. when, I, when there were all sorts of different mm. knowledge, a very hard, a very hard experience, but yeah. the common knowledge base mm. was very fragmented and there was nothing that we knew that we had absolutely together. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And is that just illustrating what, what it's always been like when we were teaching face to face? It was always fragmented, yeah. we just kind of assumed that it all happened in the classroom, with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That, yeah. It was all part of learning. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. an experience. Yeah. yeah. But I think social media on the whole, not only WhatsApp, the ethics of it, mm -hmm. you know, the hierarchies, Facebook and so on, it's really um, we just accept it because we think it is preventing isolation of communities by having some avenue for them to talk to each other. But the ethics are sometimes not uh, the ethics are questionable because mm -hmm. it's there it, it is there it is, it is completely there and where the oddities will all move yeah mm -hmm. so well, i've been an online student for many years and i absolutely love student communities and participating in them and um, it really made me feel like we are part of a community so just okay whatsapp groups twitter everything mm -hmm. look, not everyone does so and i know mm -hmm. that and I think that's important. Some people wouldn't join the WhatsApp group. Some people would. I think it's just important to know that, not to share, not to share really crucial information just in one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that that is something that can happen with the WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. um, students, it could become the place to find mm -hmm. all of the info to do with your course. And we're comparing it to if people were talking in a cafe. Well, that limits the number of people. Like, you know, if they're all talking about the, the course and they're giving um, information to each other, mm -hmm. there's a limit to how many people can be hearing that. And so that conversation can't be referred to backwards. Yeah, it's a factor afterwards. Like, it can with WhatsApp. So that could become that WhatsApp group that is only students within it could become sort of like where students are referring back to for really key information. Um, but then there's the problem if you also have a, an official space for where the tutor's involved. And uh, the for you know more specific information to do with the, the course or module, mm -hmm. um, then students might feel that that you know there's too many things for them to be involved in. Yeah. As well, I think these are the things that we've been finding when we've been talking to staff mm -hmm. who are running these sorts of uh, these sorts of things and have these kind of concerns. Navigation is helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you to everybody who's contributed today and to the people who come to the conversation. Uh, and there was a lot to take away, uh, certainly a lot coming from the Motion and Trends group in terms of the good luck with exploring this competition and definition of confidence. And certainly there's a gap, there's a huge gap there. I'm very interested to hear where you go with that because uh, you know, it, it's obviously something that's very important. It's got a lot to go. And for our two speakers, we have some very, very interesting, lots and lots of thoughts there, particularly about the relation of our official selves with the world of the different worlds and the VLA. And everybody else is how we navigate social media. So thank you to everybody who participated. That was very, very interesting. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. And Andrew, the manager. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.